Hi, I'm Tracy. And I'm Sherry. And welcome to Hearst Castle. The Neptune Pool was inspired by ancient Greek and Roman architecture. Ancient civilizations have been influencing art throughout time, especially mosaics. And today, Tracy and I are going to take you on a journey to learn what mosaics are and see how they were used in everyday life as well as art. So let's go discover the mosaics of Hearst Castle. This is the front door to Hearst Castle. Behind this door is a Roman mosaic. Let's go check it out. What are we looking at right now? Well, this is a mosaic. And you notice there are little pieces of stone there, and that's what we call tesserae. A tesserae could be made out of different things. They could be made out of bone, uh, glass, or ceramic material. Today, we're going to make our mosaic out of construction paper. And this was all held down by some kind of adhesive material. And notice those little pieces of tessera are, well, they have spaces in between them, and that's important. Now you can see you've been looking at what might be a dolphin, and we have a fancy fish here, and in the center we have a merman. Now this mosaic is at the front door of Hearst Castle, but we also have one at the back door. Sherry showed you the mosaic at the front of the house in the assembly room, black and white tesserae, fish, dolphin, merman. Here in the morning room of Hearst Castle, there is a different type of ancient mosaic. Does it look like a carpet to you? Geometric pattern, which was common for ancient mosaics. There were many types of scenes depicted in ancient mosaics. There was love and war, gladiators, athletes, scenes of daily life and food and fish, human figures, and mythology. Do you think Neptune ever made his way into one or two mosaics? They weren't always stone tesserae. Sometimes mosaics are even made up of glass and gold. There she is. Let's go to the pool. Okay. Have you ever wanted to walk on gold? Well, this is floor tiling in the Roman pool. And we mentioned that they make tesserae out of many different things earlier. One of the things is gold. So there's a thin layer of gold in these glass tiles. And look, there's even gold in the pool. The indoor Roman pool at Hearst Castle was also inspired by ancient civilizations, specifically Roman bathhouses. These public bathhouses were another way where mosaics were displayed. What? There she is. Well, do you think it's deep enough if I dive in right now? Sherry, it's 10 feet deep. Wow, plenty of room. Are you ready to make that mosaic? All right, I'll swim later. It's time to make our mosaic. Now, the first thing we wanna do is pick out a pattern, what we want to make. And I just Googled children's patterns for mosaics and I came up with this butterfly, which is a fun one to make. But I also took a picture of one of the seahorses that are here in the Roman pool. And then I also found this cat, which was in an ancient Roman mosaic. So I thought it'd be fun to actually make something that wasn't an ancient Roman mosaic. And I found a fish that was in a mosaic in Israel. Um, and this was in a larger uh, mosaic, but this was one of the fish inside that mosaic. And this mosaic was actually found in Lod, Israel. It's uh, probably about 1800 years old. So this fish, I just kind of sketched roughly on a piece of paper. Now you could do that and then build it on this piece of paper, but I also decided to make a stencil of the fish. 
and I did that out of a little thicker construction paper. And then I used this stencil and I put it the reverse way that I want it to swim. That's because we're gonna use a technique today that's called indirect or reverse mosaic. And I'll explain more about that later. So I laid my stencil down on uh, this piece of paper and actually drew it. So that's one way you could do it. You could use a stencil uh, and draw the outline of the fish. So I have him on my ground piece of paper today, which is what I wanna use when I'm making this mosaic. And I'm going to do it out of construction paper. So the things that you will need besides uh, your template or whatever you wanna make the mosaic out of is some glue. And I think it's easier to use this kind of glue than um, you know the liquid glue, uh, a pair of scissors, and then the colors out of the construction paper that you want. So I bought a package of construction paper. And today I'm gonna to be using uh, the yellow, the blue, the orange, and the red. And so first of all, I've gotta make some pieces. So I did pre-cut some pieces out of those colors, which I'll put here on the table, but I wanna make some more just to show you how I did it. So I actually take uh, a few colors, like I have these three colors right now, and I'm going to cut about that wide, and you can make them as wide or as thick or thin as you want, and I'm just gonna cut a strip like this. And they can be different sizes because you can use irregular sizes in mosaics. They use regular and irregular sizes. And we're just going to cut oh, about that thick maybe and put it in the pile here. So we have our piece of paper here. And I think the easiest thing to do is to actually start building the outline of the fish first. And I have a, a template of the fish that I'm thinking about that I've seen and it kind of has black that goes around the outside of it. Um, and so I'm, what I'm gonna do is find the pieces of black. So I can just spread these out. And now there's a couple ways I could do this. I could actually glue it and then put it down right now, one at a time. But then if I don't like the way it looks, I would have to take it back up again. So I really like this, what they call an indirect uh, or reverse method. And that is, is that I'm gonna build my mosaic without putting any glue down at first. And this is sort of how they did the Roman pole as well, not with a glue stick and construction paper, but the same kind of method. So I'm gonna take these thin strips of black and place them around the outside of the fish. Now notice I'm leaving space in between and that's really important because that's one of the things that makes it a mosaic. If I put them together and they're overlapping, that would be more like a collage and not a mosaic. So I'm gonna do the black around the outline and then maybe my next layer would be red. And so I'll take some red squares and oops, sometimes I get away from you. So you just keep building this mosaic as you go. And well, I think I'll speed things up just a little bit. putting the layer of glue down, which could be in a real mosaic uh, concrete or mortar. Uh, and then I'm going to take this piece that has the glue on it and put it over the other piece. Try to get it as straight as possible. Lay it down and then I'm going to press it and hopefully picking up all our pieces. So let's turn it over and I'll pull this paper off and we'll see what happened. <gasps> Look, he's swimming in the correct direction now. 
And I might have to adjust a couple of things, although this looks pretty good. And here's our fish. Sherry, that is a great mosaic. Well, thank you, Tracy. And not everybody's mosaic will look the same because that's what art is, your interpretation. So even if you made a fish, it might look a little different, but it's all perfect. And Sherry's fish fits right in with the theme here at the Indoor Roman Pool. Aquatic sea life, fish, mermaids, sailboats, seahorse, Great job, Sherry. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you.